This awesome, almighty God. Muslims talk about Allah, which is no God. Muhammad, there's no deliver. Uh, uh, Buddhists, all, all they come to, but they have absolutely no proof. But our God. Come on. We don't have to wonder, is my God real? My God has proved himself so many, over 3,000 prophecies in the Bible, and none of them come close to it. They come exactly like it said to come to pass. That's what I hit the Muslims with. Tell us exactly how Jesus is going to be born. How he's going to die. Everything about it. Where and everything. Every last thing. See, on top of the mosque it says, God has no son. Well, that means Allah. He don't have a son. But my God, come on. Oh, so they say hallelujah. Come on. So they say hallelujah. My God has no son. His name is Jesus. My sister sang here many years ago. What was it, 1982? We was in Israel with mom. Mm -hmm. My mother had three massive heart attacks and they gave her up to die. Mm -hmm. Put her in the Hadassah Hospital. And guess who came in the, the bed right over with a curtain right between? Joel Mayer, the president of Ooh. Israel. Wow. How many of you know God has things ordained? Yes. Yes. The doctors told me and my sister, your mother will die here. Her heart is so damaged and so forth, there's no way she's going to live. And they come in and they say to my mother, my, my, you got you had that one wrong. You're a little skinny, fireball Indian woman. I mean, she's powerful. They say, how do you feel? Mama said, I feel good. Now, I get a little bit of pain in my back, but I, I well, you can't feel good. These heart attacks, you no, but I, I, I'm okay. I feel good. Now, that heart attack, that ain't going to kill me. <laughs> Live in my faith. In Jesus above. Mama had strength. Mama told me and my sister and my brother and my sister's boyfriend when we went out to do some robbery, and my wife included. My mama walks out the porch, she said, You're all up to no good. <laughs> she said, You go do what you're up to? She said, You're going to jail tonight. And me and my brother, guess what? We sing a song that night. I'm in the jailhouse now. So <laughs> my brother said, Mom, shut up! Every time you say something like that, come to pass! How do you know Mama had a hotline to glory? What a mighty God we serve. Michael the Archangel, you ought to know that, but no. Doctor said, nothing I can do for it. Heart so damaged and so forth. There's nothing we can do. It's only a matter of time. How many days was we there? It was almost a month. Almost a month, I know. It was 28 days, I think. 21 days of yeah. and One day, oh my, my sister comes to me before I can get to her, and she said, God spoke to me and said, we're supposed to take Mama home. I was going to tell her that. Confirmation. Mm. We told the doctor, we're taking Mama home. He said, we don't know how she's lived this long, but he, if you take her off of all this stuff here, and if you would get her into the aircraft, into the jet, and as soon as it comes up in the high altitude, the atmospheric pressure on her heart will automatically kill her. But we heard from God. We said, we're taking her home. He said, we'll send the nurse, because you might as well expect the worst. How many of the devil will tell you that kind of stuff? Come on. Make you believe, you know. We get on that plane, and as soon as we broke high altitude, mom's look like she's dying. I'm in the back of the plane, my sister's up with mom, so I'm like, I love her, push on the level, come on, push on the level. Everything settles down, bring her back home uh, to New York. They had an ambulance and brought mom home, done the, I mean, the worst roads you ever want to see, and so forth. Put her in a York hospital. And we carried the reports home all that time from, from Israel. We handed them to the doctors, and the doctors read across the report, and right in front of us, you know what they said? Those dumb Jewish doctors. I said, What? He said, There's no way this can be right. Oh, gosh. <laughs> <laughs> See, the 
that if you call me, receive not the, the thing that's of the Spirit. They're foolishness to him. Put mom in bed and so forth, and I mean they had doctors and nurses and anybody and everybody in mom's room. And they're checking her. And they're saying, how do you feel? Mom said, I feel good. I feel good. You just, every now and then I get a little bit of pain back here on my back. I, 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 decide, I feel good. How many of you know that? That's not natural talking. <laughs> Look at somebody say, you're not normal. <laughs> look at that woman in the pink and she's not normal. Turn around and look at that woman in the pink and say, you're not normal. You're not normal. <laughs> Tell her, neither are you. <laughs> so if the shoe fits, wear it. I know I'm not normal. <laughs> but while we're standing there, the doctors, my mom was laying right here in bed. And they're discussing how severe this is. They said, well, her heart has got so much damage that if they try to operate on it, it'll automatically kill her because she's got so much damage. They said uh, they have this, what's that balloon called? Air plastic or something like that? That balloon that goes that shoves in your heart. Angel, what's it called? Angel plastic. Angel plastic, whatever. Angel, yeah, angel. Well, you all know what it is. <laughs> 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 but there's supposed to be a balloon that go down through. And he said, my mom was laying there in bed, and she said, now, there's too much damage in her heart, plus all her arteries are clogged on the corners. If, if it was open and so forth, she didn't have all this. He said, we could do that, but uh, there's no way we could do that, because immediately as soon as we start to do that, it would bring the heart attack on. And my mom was laying there hearing all this. His mama, she says, go ahead and do that. <laughs> what? He said, what? Mama said, go, go ahead and do that. He said, but don't you understand it'll kill you? Mama said, no, no. She said, that's not going to kill you. She said, just, just go ahead and do that. And he's talking to me and my sister trying to talk her out of this thing here. They can't operate. You can't do that. What are they going to do? Mama said, go ahead. I want you to do that. Me and my sister said, listen, if mom wants it done, just do it. <laughs> Whatsoever he tells you to do, do it. Do it. <sighs> 9.30 in the morning, we're going to go ahead and do this. See, it's so easy when you're up on that mic. Mm. Can, can you get that song for us? Mm -hmm. we're, we're, we're singing that song, Sister McKinney sings, when you're up on top of the mic. And life's at its very best. Life's so easy, but then things change you down in that valley. Mm -hmm. That's where faith is really put to the That's test. Right. That's right. Mama had strength. Mm -hmm. Mama knew it wasn't going to kill her. Mm -hmm. Mama worked and seen many miracles. And Mama would say something, you could take it to the bank, Boa. Mm -hmm. She had a hotline of glory. Mama was always fasting and praying and saying, mm -hmm. always. Next morning, we were upstairs, and they come in and get mom. You, you have to see my mama, how, how small and fragile she was, and so forth. Mm -hmm. And that's from fasting. Mm -hmm. They come and get her, and so forth, like that. They wheel mom down the hallway, and Dee's going with them. The nurse comes in and starts gathering up all the flowers sitting on the window, and so forth. I said, uh, what you do with those flowers? Uh, you got to change rooms for mom or what? She said, no. She said, your mother ain't going to need these flowers because she's going to die. Wow. And I screamed. Mm -hmm. I instantly got mad. Did you ever instantly get mad, brother? Mm -hmm. I said, put those flowers back. Put them back now. I mean, put them back now. And she's over there. I said, my mother ain't going to die. She's going to live. And a woman across the hallway, she, she said, shut up, shut up, shut up. I'm tired of you bragging about this Jesus. Your mother's going to die like I'm going to die. And I ran across and said, you're going to die, but my mama ain't going to die. Amen. <laughs> See, don't you come to me and tell me that this stuff ain't real. Take us down there. <laughs> And here's a waiting room. 
York Memorial, right? Mm -hmm. I don't know if the operating room is still the same, but right beside the operating room was the waiting room. It had two great big glass windows and the big double doors. <sighs> Doctors told us, he said that your mother's got less than 1% chance of pulling through. And if the operation goes good, I think he said it would be four hours and 15 minutes, four, four hours and a half, something like that. He said, that is if everything went good, but don't expect it to. Now you know we are praying. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah, my God's will be Lord. Hallelujah, that's a holy woman of God. Lord. Lord. She already prophesied, said, I'm not going to die, I'm going to live. Come on. Mm -hmm. She bragged about you. And while I was in Israel, guess who I got to talk to? Go to my air. Amen. Woo. Don't go to my air all about Jesus. To not only her, but her three daughters, her husband, and the whole Israeli staff out in the hallway. And I told them how great Jesus was. Somebody say, Hallelujah. Woo! Yeah. Woo! Thank you. Woo! Don't tell me your steps ain't ordered of God. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Brother Humphrey, you act weird. I don't care what you say about me. I feel good. Full of joy. <laughs> so say amen. amen. So the moment she's on this stretcher, she looks up and she's laying back and they get ready to shove her in to operate and mom says, see you after that. <laughs> <laughs> and the doctor tells you, no way. Come on. <laughs> We're talking about our awesome God. The one and true and only awesome God. There's only one. Yes. Come on. There's God the Father, Jesus the Son, and the Holy Ghost. I mean, these three are one. Come on. They're real. Yes. <laughs> so they shoved them in. I think it was an hour and 15 minutes, but a very short time. Very short. Me and my sister and the pastor and a couple of us, we're all sitting here. And all of a sudden we look up, and here comes a surgeon, still dressed in white. Had his mask pulled down here like this. He comes up to the glass sliding doors, two doors side by side. He takes the one door and he shoves it back. And he put his foot like this here, hold the door back. And he went like this here, put both hands and just looked over us like this here. And dropped his head. They stood there. What would you think? Mm -hmm. She had died. Say what, Brother Mike? She had died. That's what I was thought. Mm -hmm. That's the first thought the devil put in you. That's what they wanted. And I'm Say what, honey? That's what they wanted. Yeah. And I'm still trying to live in faith. And I stood up and said, Doc! And it probably about, about almost as far as back where those doors are. Mm -hmm. I said, Doc, how's Mom? He sent her holding that door back and he went like this, he went. He never answered, he just dropped his head. Whoa. I said, Doc, how's mom? He went. Now I took off running, I come up to him, I said, Doc, how's mom? He said, uh, she's in the hallway. What's the first thought would be through your mind? They would try to say, she's dead. I stepped out around him, and by eight feet away, I looked, and Mama is sitting up on a stretcher telling the nurses about Jesus. I turned around and back, and I said, Doc, what's going on? He said, uh, there's a miracle. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Somebody say, hallelujah, come on. Jesus. <laughs> My mama just died a couple years ago, but you know how she died? Yeah, Mom just went to see if she said, I just want to go and home. Mm -hmm. Mom had to say, now you tend your cows and I'll tend to mine. I just want to go home. <laughs> and that's how Mom went. She just went home. See, when she died, she just shut her eyes. And... So I say, have a call. Oh, <laughs> <Amen. laughs> Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Mm -hmm. tell you many stories, many stories. Mm -hmm. They're all true stories. Mm -hmm. Where you at? Get back up here. Come on, preacher. I told you about preaching. Oh, let her sit there. She wanted to sit there. For when for the time ye ought to be teachers, 
ye have need to, that one teach you again, which be the first, principles of the oracles of God, and are become such as have need of milk, and not of, str and not of strong meat. Okay, now Paul's rebuking these people, the Hebrew church. Now this is what he says. Every last one of us here, no matter whether it's here or right there or wherever, we ought to be teachers. That's right. If you've been saved any any length of time, you ought to have a testimony. You ought to be able to teach the word, preach the word of God. You ought to be able to stand up and boldly proclaim who Jesus Christ is. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. You ought to be able to do that. Yes. And Paul says, for, for when the time you ought to be teachers, you have need that one teach you again the first principles of the oracles of God. He said, when you ought to be a teacher, you need somebody else to come along and give you the kindergarten, the first grade stuff, start all over again. <coughs> Babies. He said, uh, and he said, and I'll become as such as need milk and not strong meat. He just didn't say meat, he said strong meat. He said, your babies, where you ought to be teaching others, ministering others, he said, you need somebody to teach you all over again, and you can't even use strong meat. Pastor, isn't that disgusting? That's true. That's true. You, you got people coming to your church all the time, come in and shout and dance loud and so forth, and the first little thing, <coughs> and then they leave, and then all hell breaks loose, they come in and pray for me. You got to answer? Me. There they go again. Ten lepers, all is healed. One comes back and gives God the praise and glory. He said, there was ten. He said, but only one has come back. Where's the other nine? Go ahead, sis. Verse 14. Yeah, um, yeah 13. 13. For everyone that uses, uses milk is unskillful in the, word, in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. But strong meat belongeth to them that are of full age, even though who by even reason those. of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. But strong meat belongs to them that are full age. Can I put somebody's name right there? Strong meat belongs to my mother and my sister and my wife. And I can say that as a fact. Because I guarantee you, they're like I am. I don't like going to a church where you're getting babyfied and stuff all over again. Mm -hmm. I'd rather go home and drink my moo moo and eat my bonbons. For you people who don't understand that, that's milk and my sweeties, <laughs> donuts, cookies. But strong meat belongs to them in our full age, even those who by reason of use, everybody say use, use. they use that strong meat. <coughs> having their sense exercise to discern both good and evil knows they know how to do it and what to do. Come on. Now, Hebrews 6, 1 and 2, Paul's going to go down here and he's going to explain something here. Go ahead, Sister Linda. Therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, let us go on unto perfection and laying again the foundation of repentance from the deed, from, from the dead world, from the works. dead works of the faith toward God. Go ahead, next verse, and then you can sit down. Then. Verse two. Go ahead. Of the doctrine of the baptism of and of laying of hands and the resurrection of the dead and of eternal judgment. Now, thank you, sister. Give Sister Linda a great big hand. Yeah. 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 Well, let, let me break this down here. Remember when Paul says the principal doctrines, and there was elementary beginner class. Now, this is what he's saying. Now, let, let, let me pick on Brother Mike here. Let, let me pick on Pastor Johnson. If Pastor Johnson came in here tonight, and he'd say these words to all of us. Leave the doctrines of Christ. What would you think? Leave the doctrines of Christ? Paul says that. He says, therefore, leaving the principal doctrines of Christ. What's that? The beginner self. Doctrines of Christ. Let us go to perfection, maturity, 
not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works. So he says, you should not have to hear, you've got to repent, you've got to repent, you've got to repent, you've got to repent. We ought to know that if we sin, we've got to repent. Mm -hmm. So if you've got to repent, then the eternal salvation people must be wrong, or why would you have to repent? That's why I told that one preacher, Pastor uh, Smuck, it was on television or radio years ago, I said, you believe what you preach? He said, yeah, I sure do. I said, how many years have you been saved? He said, 21 years. I said, have you ever asked God to forgive you in those 21 years? He said, I sure have. He said, every night before I go to sleep, he said, I lay my head down and say, God, if I've done anything wrong, please forgive me. I said, you're a hypocrite. He said, what are you talking about? I said, you're, you're not obeying what you're preaching. Because your doctor says you're forgiven of your past sins, your present sins, and your future sins. If you really believe that, why would you ask God to forgive you if he already, if he already forgave you? I say, it's a true man inside you. He's checking you. But Paul's saying right here, therefore leaving the principles, doctrine of Christ, let's go on to perfection, maturity, not laying again the foundation of repentance. Now, I've been saved 36, 37 years, whatever it is. I don't need another message on repent. I don't need to hear a salvation message. How many of you in here need to hear another salvation message? If you're saved, you don't need to hear it anymore. If you know the Word of God, for all I sin come short of glory, we all know those things. And we know that we... Brother Mike, you know that you know that you know you ask God to forgive you, don't you, brother? Why then would you come in here and then want me to preach a salvation message to you? Why would you want to go to the church? He's going to preach the salvation message. Pastor, shut up! Give me some meat if you don't mind. Yes. <laughs> Come on. Teacher, shut up! He says, leave it, uh, the foundation of repentance from dead works and a faith towards God. So here's the second one. Faith. We ought to know that faith is impossible to please God without faith. For the he that comes to God must believe that he uh, is a reward of those that diligently seek him. We, we all know faith. Mm -hmm. We all know faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So he said that was first grade stuff. Mm -hmm. Repentance and faith. That's what he said. He said lay that aside. Huh? <coughs> Brother John, how many years were you in the military? Almost 20 years. I don't think in those 20 years they had to take him outside and say, Now, soldier, this is a rifle. <laughs> and you've got to have bullets put in this thing. <laughs> no, I did not know that. I did not know what that thing is. <laughs> Come on now. I mean, seriously. Stupid. Why are you stupid? That's like I'm 71 years old and somebody comes to me and say, Baby Humphrey, diaper. Come on. Here's your bottle, sucky bottle. Come on, come on. Stupid! <laughs> you gotta look at me and say, you either get me some good old strong meat out of here, or I'm gonna whack you a shot. <laughs> Go on. Amen, Sister Teresa? My baby? My little daughter? He says, Leave the doctrines of repentance from dead works and faith towards God and the doctrine of baptisms. Baptisms. Two. And that means more than one. How many of you know there's two baptisms? Which we all know. We need to be baptized in water. We've all done that. There's another one called baptized in the Holy Ghost. We've all done that. I don't need to hear Brother John, you need to be baptized in water. And you need the baptism of the Holy Ghost and fire. I got it! Many years ago! Oh, come on now. And of laying on of hands. 
Every one of us knows these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out devils, they shall speak with new tongues, and if they drink anything dead, they shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Come on! We know it's not just not for the pastor or evangelist. We can lay hands on the sick. So we say, hallelujah. Yes. 